Some police officers are never going to learn that they aren't above the law and can't enforce their own laws. Today, we're talking about police officers who went too far with flexing their tiny authority and instant karma caught up with them. Let's go to the videos. When a journalist was exercising his right to film in public for a story, he didn't anticipate being interrogated by two cops about his reasons. Despite not needing to justify his filming, the cops overstepped their boundaries, behaving as if they were above the law. The journalist attempted to educate them, asserting his rights protected by constitutional law, emphasizing his freedom to film from the sidewalk. But some cops will never learn. One officer even demanded to see a license and questioned which newspaper he worked for. Their arrogance persisted as the cop pressed for the journalist's ID and name. Before you try to violate my rights, man, you're on YouTube. Just kind of let I know you're filming the uh, parking lot back here. This chapter 119 allows me, my first amendment right allows me, I'm an independent journalist on a public sidewalk doing a story on the building. What's your name and badge number? My name's Officer Krieger, sir. Well, I'm an investigative reporter. I can't tell you the story. I'm on a public sidewalk. If you if you don't know the law, you need to get a sergeant or your watch commander. I'm just asking you what you're doing out here, that's all. I have committed a crime. I'm not answering any questions. I need my lawyer present. Oh, okay, sir. His name is Nick Chodos from Handling Law. That's it. You don't have a news crew that you're working for? Doesn't matter. Never heard of a private eye? Yeah, I've heard of a private eye. Well, then. So you need a license? What law is that? Private eye, usually, yeah. What law is that? I don't know the exact law. Now, what law? Hey, what's your name and badge number since you're approaching me? My name and badge number? Oh, uh, yes. My name is Ryan. My badge number is 149. Thank you. Listen, if you don't want an internal affairs investigation done, I think you need to back off, kick rocks. Sir, you can do whatever you want. And you can ask questions all you want. You don't want to give your name at all by any chance or ID? No, I don't have to. This cop attempted to fabricate a scenario where the journalist appeared guilty, but his efforts fell flat. Despite the cop's claim that the journalist was filming in a restricted area, no laws were broken. When will cops learn that people have the right to go wherever they please and film what's in public view, provided that they don't trespass? Shortly after, two more cops arrived. One began snapping pictures of the journalist, perhaps hoping to intimidate him into leaving. Yet when the journalist requested the cop's name and badge number, of course, he remained silent. These cops seemed oblivious to the First Amendment and their duty to identify themselves when asked. I'm committing a crime. You got any drugs or weapons on you? Why would I have drugs or weapons on me? Sir? I don't, oh, you don't have a weapon? Illegal weapon? Yeah. I mean, I think I smell marijuana coming out of that car, young man. I'm ready to violate your rights. You see where I'm going with this? Sure. You understand where I'm going with this? That's fine. Well, you're two armed men that approach me on the sidewalk. You're filming a restricted area. No. And, uh, but I'm not in that restricted area. You're filming it, so it doesn't matter. It's not illegal. That's it. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to have them email a complaint if you don't back off. No, I'm not leaving. I'm on a public sidewalk. I'm on an area where I'm legally allowed to be as well, sir. I'm on a public, I'm on a public sidewalk. The freedom to stand here. Oh, yeah, that's fine. We can stay here all day. I have the freedom to stand on a public sidewalk. We're going to, thank you, make that a public record. I'm going to FOIA request it. What's your name and badge number since you're using your phone? 639, badge number 639, pistol master. Let's see if he, uh, let's see if he identifies. What's your name and badge number? It's your policy, Mark Seckley. Despite their attempts to assert their tiny little authority, these cops only succeeded in tarnishing their department's reputation and trampling on the right to freedom of press. They seemed to forget their oath to uphold these very rights they were violating. When the journalists suggested they consult their supervisor for guidance, they remained convinced of their righteousness. One even claimed the journalist's behavior was suspicious despite acknowledging he hadn't committed any crime. Ultimately, the officer's feelings shouldn't override a journalist's rights. I need you to just back off, okay? I got your badge number, now I'm going to fully request that phone because you used it for public record. I'm going to stay on the sidewalk, I'm going to continue for a few hours doing my, my story, doing my documentary, okay. you're ruining my shot, I don't appreciate it. You're trying to violate my First Amendment right. Well, what is your name when you're filming for all the police vehicles? Oh, why is that? Is it, is it a gun or, is it a, gun or a, a cell phone? It's the way that society is going right now, filming things like you're trying to scope it out. Oh, so like, so basically what you're saying is this day and age theology. A lot of people are trying to ambush cops. Oh, they try to ambush them? When you're, when you're filming an area that's restricted. With a cell phone? With a cell phone. Oh, they ambush them? 
I, I think if you go in, listen, if you go inside and get your sergeant and say, hey, my officer over here made a public record with his phone. He took a picture of him. Okay. Identify me. Run my name. But you're not getting it from me. I haven't committed a crime. I didn't say you have committed a crime, just saying you're acting a little weird. Oh, weird? The police saw the fact that the journalist didn't want to tell them his name as an opportunity to accuse him of being up to something because he wouldn't identify himself. Why even have constitutional law if the policemen don't respect it? One of the officers even claimed that they felt unsafe in the presence of this journalist. The journalist only had a mobile phone with him to record while the policemen had a weapon. When they realized they were dealing with someone who knew the law much better than they did, they turned around and left. I'm a journalist. All right, well, even journalists don't usually go around. You don't know who I am. I'd like to know who you are, but you're not telling me. It doesn't matter. He just made a public record. You can facially uh, recognize that. It's simple. You think this is the first time? You think this is the first time I've been approached as a journalist outside of a police station like this? I highly doubt it, but obviously something's going on. You're doing something strange. Right, no, 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 no. All right, I'm not going to talk. Now you, now you act like I'm being investigated for a crime or something like that. There's probably about 300 officers in and out of Tampa police within the past two years that do know who I am. Well, I'm sure. You have to prove that I'm trying to conceal my identity for a crime that you suspect me of. Please, stop quoting false laws. All right, sir. All right, thank you. All this stuff that you're telling me, if you go in, if you go in there and try to look up the Florida statutes, it's not going to be there, OK? I'm on a public sidewalk. I was asking what you're doing and why you're telling me. Oh, nobody's nervous. Nobody's nervous. I did this all the time. All right, guys, so I'm going to flip this around. You're an idiot. Yeah, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. Kick rocks. Kick rocks, asshole. Get out of here. A cop pulled over a man without a valid reason. When he saw that the man in the car knew that the cop had to have a good reason for restricting someone's movement on the road, he had to come up with a reason for stopping him. The first reason was speeding. However, it turned out that the man was a professional driver and earned money that way, so he explained to the cop that he certainly wasn't speeding and that he knew how to follow the speed limit. After all, the man had proof on his camera that he wasn't speeding. When the cops saw that this wouldn't pass as a reason, he quickly changed his story. This time, he claimed he stopped the man because of tinted car windows. Quite by chance, the man told him that he had been going to a factory which turned out to be closed and that he was now returning home. The cops found this answer to be suspicious. Yeah, totally. All right, let's try that again. Why Why are we stopping me and having a dog come out? One, because I'm driving down the road. Dog out. Two right now, you just stopped, you just slammed your vehicle in the middle of the road. You two, put, I, I go you to put your you lights over. on, maybe two, you're going go around me. Two, I go to pull you over, uh -huh. you do a complete circle. Okay. okay? It, but, and now I'm stopping you, and you backed your car up. You That's told me to back in here. You just told me that you're coming from Delaware. You told to me pretzels. to back my car into you, the spot. I never said that. Yes, you, just, you did. You just told me that you're coming from Delaware to buy pretzels on Easter. That's right. Okay. I'm allowed to go out and drive wherever I want. This is America. Zipping, zipping up and down Clevis Bridge Road. Nobody's okay. zipping up anywhere. I went to speed limit the whole time. Speed limit. 35, then 25. The whole time. I'm a professional driver for a living. I know how to follow the speed limit. First it was erratic driving. Now you say it's tint. Which one is it? And don't forget, I have you on tape saying it was erratic driving. For, 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 doesn't make for, sense. First no, we went... Stop. Listen, I'm going to explain things. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and argue. I'm going to explain things to you. All right. You're driving an hour from Delaware. Your interstate travel doesn't match, up, doesn't match up with your destination route. You just advised me that you're going to the pretzel factory right there. It, it, it's closed. Unfortunately, that pretzel factory is closed. So if you know that, why would you be heading to a closed destination? Maybe so one's an open and one's not open. The cop caused the scene about the gas factory being closed. He insisted on knowing where the man was coming from and where he was headed, claiming it was all part of his investigation. Of course, someone urgently needs to inform these police officers that this is not how things work and that he has no authority over citizens as long as they haven't broken any laws. However, the man didn't hesitate to assert himself, retrieved his documents, and left. That, that pretzel factory, the one that you said you're going to, is closed. Then I guess I won't get it, and I'll try the one in Philly okay. next, in South so Philly. Maybe, but you, so well, you're coming from Delaware, you, you could It doesn't matter where I'm coming from. It does. No, it, it doesn't. That's my job to investigate. No, it's not. And you're not investigating like that, anything. You um, pull me over because I'm out of state, and you're, you're pulling your game. I wasn't speeding. I wasn't doing... Uh, first, we went from... Time I checked, there's first, a lot more things you could be stopping. First, you went from zipping along, right? Zipping along the road. This is what you told me. 
And then you went okay. to then you went to erratic you driving. Then you went to suspicious I, behavior. I you, and right, the right, fourth right, excuse I, I was it. tinted I, windows. I explain it to you this. Tinted your windows. Your has tinted windows, okay? Uh, that's great. Second, they're legal. Your interstate travel. They're legal. And, and where you're coming from, Gulf makes absolutely no sense. That's you're driving good. 45 minutes to Delta. Have a nice day. I'll take my place. I'll take my documents. You understand where I'm coming from? You have a nice day. Have a great day. Yep. Sometimes cops get so bored on duty that they invent problems to assert their authority. Take these three rookies, for example, who decided to flex their tiny muscles on the first person they encountered. Coincidentally, it was a man who hadn't committed a single traffic violation, yet the cops decided to pull him over and accuse him of not stopping at a stop sign. What's interesting is that the cops didn't have a dash camera on in their car, and only one of the three had a body camera on, despite the rule requiring cops to have cameras on for their safety and the safety of citizens. I wonder how they plan to prove that this man didn't stop at a stop sign. I'm such a threat to you. With drugs. I mean, it's, it's your assessment. Was I driving radically? What, why do you, why do you suspect me of having drugs? I'd like to hear that. Because it's my right to plead the fifth, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so I'm doing that. Well, yeah, and I'm inside to run my car, your car with me. Go ahead. That's just how it works. You answer, you ask the question, I answer. I guess. I just, it's excessive. It's a power trip, but that's cool. Do, go do it, man. Do it. Do what you gotta do. Sir, you might want to turn on your lights. That guy almost hit you. However, that wasn't the worst part. One of the cops approached the man and started interrogating him about his destination as if that had anything to do with the stop sign violation. The man chose to invoke the Fifth Amendment and refused to answer any questions from the officers. Despite this, the officer who engaged with him decided to charge him with drug possession simply because he refused to speak. It speaks volumes about the cops and their disdain for anyone who challenges their perceived authority. That guy almost hit you. You might want to turn on your lights. Oh, he's a cop too. Oh, okay. Three of you, huh? For little old me? Just because this guy's got an attitude? Can I get your badge number? Because I want to FOIA your phone, too. I'm sorry? Can I get your badge number? I'd like to FOIA the video on your phone. For you. FOIA request? Okay. 1383. 1383? What's your name? Yeah. Hey, Rodriguez. Thanks, sir. Yes, you're I appreciate that. It's a Freedom of Information Act. Oh. Yeah, okay. You don't know what that is? Really? Wow. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I appreciate it. I appreciate you getting me on my way. The cops quickly shifted their focus from the stop sign and began harping on about the man's license plates. They claimed that the man had some sort of cover on his license plate that needed to be removed. One of them even offered to remove it for him right then and there. The man was puzzled as he didn't understand what cover they were referring to. Another officer promptly handed him a ticket to sign, but he opted to read through it first, smartly. Apparently, the cops didn't appreciate this, urging him to sign it hastily. It's baffling how they feel entitled to waste someone's time, but get offended when faced with any resistance. Are there any good phone number for you in case they change the court date so you don't get jammed up? Uh, yeah, I gave you a phone number. Yeah. I'm gonna put this here, okay? Right. Um, another thing. I really don't feel like, since everything's handwritten, oh, I'm sorry, I'll grab that for you. That was a mistake. Is that okay with you? Okay. Oh, no, it should happen. Um, yeah, sure does. Uh, I don't really want to put this on here right now, but you're actually not supposed to have a license plate cover. Um, I mean, there's two options. I have tools, we can remove them, or you can remove it. I can lend you the tool, or I'll put it on the site. So it's really up to you. What do you mean? I don't, I don't, explained it. No, I mean, I don't understand what a license plate cover is. That is a, this is a license plate. What is it? I don't understand. What do you mean, license plate cover? Like plastic or something? The cover. See that cover you just shook? Yeah. You see how it covers part, the portion of Arizona? You're not supposed to have that. Okay. Well, you can look it up if you want to. I don't really want to side on it. All right. I'm just take it off, so that's not something we have to argue about. Okay. Is that fair? Right now, you want to take it off? I'm giving you the two options. It's really up to you. I have a tool. It's just a screwdriver. We do this all the time. Do you want to use it? No, I'm good, man. Just write it up. I'm good. All right, sounds good. All right, I'll be back. All right.
Imagine being exhausted from work and riding your bicycle home in bad weather, only to be stopped by a cop on the bridge for no apparent reason. That's exactly what happened to this man who found himself at the mercy of a police officer's whim. The man explained that he crosses the bridge on his bicycle every day on his way home and had no idea cycling was forbidden there. He even apologized to the cop for his ignorance and pledged not to ride there again. However, the officer persisted, now chastising the man for walking his bicycle on a part of the bridge. What was the real reason for the stop? Even after the man Adam provided his first name, the cop insisted on getting his last name to check for any warrants. By that logic, cops should be checking every passerby for warrants, shouldn't they? What's your name and badge number? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, getting pulled over for uh, riding my bike across the Laceport Bridge here. Typical, uh, Probably have your lights on, you kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, because uh, it's a, there's a huge disconnect between law enforcement and law-abiding law like, citizens. And I am absolutely doing nothing wrong, and you come on the middle of the bridge here, I'm heading home, you know what I mean? It's just... Well, like I said, I tried stopping. Well, I, I thought you were talking to that, that pink hair lady. That, like, oh, Cody, I didn't know. Huh? Oh, well, I wouldn't stop back there. I didn't see. I was just going through. Like, I did not know that there's a problem of riding your bike through there. I won't do it again. I, I walked it down because... Uh, the really heightened sewer people are out at the water company and they're, they're letting water out, so I had to walk oh, the bike man. down. Just so you know as well, that's the main water place. Yeah, I had to you're walk around it and then I, it. then I just, yeah, that's why I walked the bike around and then I uh, hopped on the bike right at RJ Walker and then that's when you see me. The situation became even worse when the young cop decided to call for backup over the man riding a bicycle despite not posing any danger. Fortunately, the senior officer who arrived seemed more experienced and level-headed than the younger cop eager to assert his tiny authority. The senior officer patiently listened to Adam's explanation. Adam clarified that he dismounted from his bike due to a puddle on the road caused by a repair work under the bridge, avoiding any suspicious behavior that would warrant the young cop's intervention. Adam insisted that the senior officer educate the rookie about when it's appropriate to request ID. Only when someone has committed a crime, is in the act of committing a crime, or when there's reasonable suspicion of an imminent crime. Since Adam didn't fall into any of those categories, the young cop had no grounds to ask for his ID. It's crucial for the young officer to understand that violating someone's constitutional rights could jeopardize his qualified immunity. Uh, that's, that's another cop coming over nothing, I mean, flying through traffic, over some guy riding a bicycle. Simply incredible. How you doing, sir? Uh, just give me your name. No, I mean, there's... You're detained on a traffic stop. On a traffic stop that's unlawful. No, it's not now. Like, I walked my bike down Bankway Street, hopped yeah, on you it. You were on your bike on Bankway Street. No, I, no, I was not. I, I said to you that there was the, the water main break. So, like, how can I ride my bike through the water, sir? I think it's a river. How you doing? It's a little bit of water, but well, it's not water. You're saying that I rode my bike, uh, there's a water main break going down Bankway. And I, uh, Walked my bike around it, came through the parking lot, cruising home, and he pulls up here like this, and he's demanding my my name, and I, 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 all I'm asking is, what uh, is my right as a as a, uh, a civilian not to relinquish that information unless I'm in the process of committing a crime, have committed a crime, or you know already did. So it's like. Uh, I'm just heading home for my, my doctor's appointment. I, I don't even have to disclose that information. So it's like he did not see me ride down Bankway because yes, I, did I did not. I did not. I was I, in the JK Allen parking lot. Yeah, I, I seen you. I saw you. Sadly, young cops often adopt an attitude of entitlement as soon as they receive their badge. It's concerning to think that without proper guidance, they may evolve into authoritarian figures and tyrants rather than public servants like they're supposed to be. The situation escalated further when another police car showed up. 
it's baffling that these officers have nothing better to do than to focus on a man riding a bicycle. Adam couldn't help but express his frustration at taxpayer money going towards such unprofessional conduct by the cops. How can we blame him? Anyone would go crazy in a situation like this, right? Just when it seemed like the backup saga was over, a fourth police car pulled up. Thankfully, among the arriving officers was a sergeant who took the opportunity to have a conversation with the young cop and offer some education. Instant karma caught up with the cop as the sergeant instructed him to apologize to the man for his unprofessional behavior. The young cop learned where his place was, and who knows, he might even consider a career change after the sergeant brought him back down to earth. For a man with a bicycle. Aye, 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 aye. This is freaking shit, Three officers for a man with a bicycle. Simply incredible. Yeah, it's good old taxpayer money, I guess. All three new cops. <laughs> Gonna make the front page here. That's simply incredible. Yeah, man with a bicycle. One, two, three, three, four, three, 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 three,